Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. It's good to see you here in the auditorium in the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. May the Lord bless you. We appreciate our visitors. You're always welcome here at Northside. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up, we can be a real inspiration to you out in the radio listening audience, as well as the people here in the auditorium. Now, if you get on your phone out there and call a friend, call a shut-in and have them to tune in and get this hour coming up, we'll try to be an inspiration to them. I believe we can. Take your Bible, turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Page 1271 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, page 1271. I'm speaking today on this subject, the revival of the Antichrist. I want you to turn in the Word of God, follow me in the Scriptures. Let me give you just a few of our cassette tape. Tape number 143, How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. Uh, tape number, let's see, tape number... 185, Wicked and Angry Demons. Tape number 184, Do People in Heaven Know What's Going On Here on the Earth? Tape number 175, How to Lengthen Your Life on the Earth. These and many, many others. We have 190 listed. If you'd like to have these, write in and you call for them by number or by title. And they're $3 each. And when you're writing, why don't you request one of our brochures for our proposed Holy Land Tour next year. We plan to take tour number 13 on March the 10th of next year. I've been there 12 times. Looking forward to a tour in March of next year. Now's the time to get a brochure and get your name on the list and go with us to the Holy Land. We plan to go to Israel and Rome. I hope that some of you are writing to get these brochures. Now is the time to make plans for it. Brother John Bruce will be speaking tonight in the Temple Baptist Church in Homer, Georgia, where Brother Crawford is pastor. You people up in that vicinity. You go out and hear Brother Bruce, I know he'd be a blessing to you. Now, my mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. Next Saturday, we'll complete 37 years of daily broadcasting from the classic city of Athens, Georgia. This is anniversary month. If you appreciate our stand over the years, then write to me and pray for me. I'd like to hear from you next week. May God bless you that you're concerned enough to... Let us hear from you as we have encouragement. Let us know you're praying for us and stand by financially. There may be some of you would like to make a contribution of a dollar each year we've been on the air. That most certainly be appreciated and a bit great investment and a home mission work to the glory of God. This ministry is a home mission work to the glory of God and a ministry of love. Now in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter, as from us as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now he's talking here, of course, about the second coming of Christ down to the earth. That man of sin must be revealed before Christ comes back to the Mount of Olives. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, all that is worshipped, so that he as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now the Antichrist will go to the temple of God, which will be erected in the future, yonder in Jerusalem. Verse 5, Remember you not, when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know that what withhold it that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now speaking about the revival of the Antichrist, I'm referring to the mystery of iniquity that's already working now and was working in Paul and John's day. Speaking today on the thought of the revival of the Antichrist or the revival of the spirit of iniquity. It's already in the land. Daniel tells us in the book of Daniel 7 that the little horn there is a person that's coming on the scene, a self-willed individual. That's prevalent in the land today, even among our youth. 
Parents don't tell me what to do. I know more than they. Uh, the teacher don't tell me what to do. They don't tell me what to do in my city or in college or high school or whatnot. I have my own answers. I'll do what I please. I'll do my thing. That is the spirit of the Antichrist is prevalent in the land today and it's getting worse all the time. Now we know the devil is an imitator and he tries to imitate the things that Jesus does. In fact, according to Revelation chapter 16, verses 13 and 14, that's coming a counterfeit to Godhead. That is the devil is going to try to counterfeit the Godhead. That it will be the dragon, the beast, the false prophet. But today we have in the land today what you might call a counterfeit church. You know, God has his church and the devil has his movement in the land. And we know according to Revelation chapter 17, that's coming a great church uh, that, that is the one world church that's going to be headed up, of course, uh, uh, according to Revelation 17 and called the great whore, the great harlot. That church is in the making today. The ecumenical movement is moving by leaps and bounds and there's religious leader traveling over the third world today, a false teacher, religious leader, going around telling people uh, uh, they should not, uh, uh, they should have more children whenever they have more children now than they can feed and take care of. Uh, he's teaching against birth control. He's encouraging starving people that have more children they can educate and feed, have more children. Now the reason he's about the Bible knows nothing about being born again. Now that particular movement that he's heading up will head up the one world church. The ecumenical movement today that's moving on the scene that's saying, well, we're not going to preach doctrine. We're just going to preach love and talk about our experience. We're all going to have a good time and they're building the one world church. They say we don't need a doctrine. We can make it on love. We can make it on our experience. And so the one world church is in the making and the spirit of the Antichrist is rising today and taking over in many parts of the world. This world today is in religious darkness. We are living in a religious world today and a religion without God. The devil doesn't care how much religion you get as long as you don't come to know the Savior, as long as you're not born again, as long as you don't believe the Bible. He doesn't care how much religion you get. And the devil is working fiercely today. He's having a revival today of religion in the land, deceiving multitudes and multitudes. I have a letter right here that was placed in my mailbox, my post office box, uh, last week. And it was placed in all the post office boxes in Athens, Georgia. And this letter was put out by a racketeer, one of these healing racketeers. And he wants to send out a cross, a gold cross. He wants people to take that cross. He said that he's going to pray for these people. And the Spirit of God laid it up on his heart to write this letter. And these people are going to have some problems and need to write in and get this gold cross. Now, of course, when gullible people that don't know any better write in and get that gold cross, then they're going to get the name and address. They're going to hound them and hound them for money time and time again. This man is a racketeer. He's a charlatan. He's one of these here healing racketeers. His name is, they call him here, Reverend Irwin. Evangelistic ministries and post office box and so forth. He's a racketeer. The land is filled with them. And you have gullible people that don't have any more sense to write in and get that gold cross. And then they'll write back and they'll hound them for money and they'll get money out of them. They'll scare the people half to death because they're afraid if they don't send that money in, something bad is going to happen to them. Now the Antichrist, that's the spirit of the Antichrist is in the land today. And more and more of those kind of people are rising up. I have a member sitting right here. Her husband's been in heaven four years. Last week she re received a letter from so-called Reverend Ike. Now Reverend Ike is a false prophet, a, a minister called of Satan. And he's out to get all the money he can out of people that don't know any better than to support his ministry. And they wrote her husband who's been in heaven four years. And they said that we felt led to write you. You're going to have some problems during the next month. And we want to pray for you. And they sent a little red string and said you hang this string in some place. And then you send us $27. And we'll pray for you to help you overcome these problems that you're going to have the next month. You're going to have these problems. Then God's blessing is going to be upon you and your home. Now they wrote her husband that letter last, well, week before last, and he's been dead four years. See, that's a demonism. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. That's coming from the apostates. That's coming from Satan's ministers. And the land's being filled with them every day. 
And the trouble is, what breaks your heart is poor gullible people don't know the difference between a man of God and Bible preaching than these cults are rising up in the land and deceiving multitudes. They are rising up, they're on TV, they're on radio, they're in your cities, and of course they're growing by leaps and bounds, and many of these cults are, are growing by leaps and bounds. Last Sunday I preached on the torments of hell. I made this statement, which is a true statement. I said that the, the rich man, the, the narrative of the rich man and Lazarus was not a parable. And it's not a parable in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. That's not a parable. Jesus called people by name and nowhere in the Bible that Jesus ever called anybody by name in a parable. I received a letter from Gainesville from a lady. She said, in my Bible, where they have the, the parables listed, she said, that is listed as a parable. She said, who am I to believe? Am I to believe you, Preacher Edwards, or am I to believe the Word of God? Now, the trouble with that woman, she don't know the difference between the Bible and what some man wrote about the Bible. Some man, in writing the parables, listed that as a parable. That's not the Bible, and she don't know the difference, poor soul. Evidently, she got a one of these Russellite Bibles, so-called Jehovah's Witness Bible. Now, they don't believe in hell, and evidently that's what she's looking at, and they listed that as a parable. And that cult is growing by leaps and bounds. Beloved, listen to me. The land is being filled by, with cults while people sit around and sleep, and the Antichrist is having a revival, and the spirit of the Antichrist in the land, the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of, uh, spirit of do out of what I please, and things in reverse today. There used to be a time when parents would say, All right, children, we go into the house of God. We're going to hear the word of God. We're going to hear some preaching. We're going to worship God. And children did what their parents said do. It's in reverse today. Today, parents follow their children. Whatever the children want to do, that's what the parents do. It's in a complete reverse. That's why we're in the mess we're in today. It's high time that parents stop following their children and doing what their young'uns want to do and tell the young'uns what they got to do. Now, God expects you to do that. It's the spirit of the Antichrist for your children to be rebellious and you trot around and follow them in whatever they want to do. It's a shame and you shouldn't do it. And that's why home's in a mess today and why we're having the problems we're having. That is the spirit of the Antichrist. Now we have a counterfeit church in the land today. You can join most any kind of religion that's counterfeit. But how many people today believe in fundamental Bible-believing churches today and listen to fundamental preachers preach the Word of God. Some churches are not going to have it. Some churches won't have it. Good old Bible-believing fundamental preacher couldn't get in the average pulpit today. They wouldn't let him in. John Wesley couldn't get in. Uh, Dwight L. Moody wouldn't get a chance to preach in some of them. Uh, Whitfield and others wouldn't get a chance to preach in some of them. The average message church, they wouldn't let John Wesley come and preach it if he's alive today. And he's a man that started that movement. Now listen to me. The devil is really moving today. The Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist is prevalent. It's in the land and people are being duped and deceived by religious leaders and religion. You need to take your Bible, find out where you stand, listen to the man of God if he's preaching the word of God. And if he's not preaching the word of God, don't listen to him. Don't follow him. Don't support him. God's going to hold you responsible. Oh, some people say, well, I know what I'll do. I'll drop into church for respectability. I'll dump an offering in the collection plate, and then uh, uh, my responsibility is over, and whatever they do with it, then that's their responsibility. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't get out that easy. God's going to hold you responsible for what you support. And if you don't know what you're supporting, you better find out. You may be supporting evil, liberalism, and modernism, and God's not going to let you get by with it. Now, just to say, well, it's not my responsibility. It's like burying your head in the sand. You better find out what you're supporting. God will hold you responsible. No need for you to be in ignorance. Find out what you're doing, what's supporting, where you're going, and so forth. Now, we have false churches today in the land. That's a counterfeit ministry. Now, these fellows that I'm talking about, these racketeers that mail out such junk as that, and this so called Reverend Ike that sent a letter to this uh, deceased man, and, and they, are, they are charlatans, they're racketeers, and they're counterfeit men, and they're sent out by Satan, not God. Now, listen to me, keep your feet on the floor, let me have your ears for just a minute. Did you know that the devil is calling far more preachers today and putting them in the ministry than God is calling? Now, you better listen to what this Baptist preacher is telling you. There's far more preachers today in the ministry placed there by the devil, not counting the ones that's placed in the ministry by their parents and their kinfolks. Amen. 
God's not calling a lot of preachers today. Back in the days of Elijah, what was the ratio in that day? He is about one preacher among 450 there. Beloved, listen to me. God is calling very few men today. And the men that God's calling is not afraid to preach. And they'll stand up and preach the truth. They'll give you the word of God. They'll let you know what the Bible says, whether you like it or not. God's men will do that. The ministry today is for men and not people that's spineless with a potato vine for a backbone. A man that don't have intestinal fortitude and a backbone has no business in the pulpit. I'll tell you, it's rough today in the ministry. And a man that's going to pass today, he better be a man. You can't be a little howling and, and a little sissy kind of a fella and walk around and think and tickle, tickle people's heads and scratch their backs and do God's business. You can't do that. You got to give them the word of God whether they like it or not. You got to preach conviction. You must preach this book whether they like it or not. God says do it in season and out of season. Preach the word in season and out of season. That's what he tells us in the Bible. And so you have a counterfeit ministry. Oh, you may say now, Preacher Edwards, do you mean to tell me the devil calls preachers? Do you have your Bible? If you have your Bible, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Some of you may not know that's in the Bible, that book, but it's in there. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Especially some of you in the radio listeners, you people who remember this church know it because we call your attention to it many times. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And the verse I'm going to read is found on page 1238 in the original Schofield reference Bible. I want you to see this. This is not what Preach Edwards thinks or hopes. This is what God has to say about it. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such a false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves in the apostles of Christ, no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Now notice verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Whose ministers are devil's ministers? The Bible said they're coming as angels of light. The devil's ministers are the sweetest, kindest little fellows you ever saw. They wouldn't harm a hair on your head. They're so sweet sugar wouldn't melt in their mouth. They're so kind and loving and so wonderful. Oh, they come as angels of light and they come and deceive the people and entertain them on the road to hell. You better listen to somebody preaching the Bible and find out what the truth is and stand for the word of God. No need to waste your life compromising the food around somebody that's playing around with this book and not preaching the word of God. Stand by the book. We find that the devil has his ministers. There are many of them are social mixers. They believe in a little social gospel, a little social get-together. They're good mixers. Somebody looking for a church one time went to this preacher and said, we want a pastor. We need a pastor. Our pastor left us. Could you uh, recommend a pastor? He said, well, uh, they said, would you be interested? He said, well, what kind of preacher do you want? They said, we want a good mixer. Somebody that can really mix up with the people and the young people. He said, you're not coming after me. He said, I'm an old time Holy Ghost separator. And if you don't a Bible preacher, then don't talk to me. Now these good mixers, they are not old fashioned Bible preaching separators. Jesus Christ said he didn't come to bring peace. He come to bring a sword. And he said the sword that he's bringing is going to divide homes. It's going to turn husband against wives, wives against husbands, children against parents, parents against their children. It's going to cause problems in the home. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace this time. I come to bring a sword. And he came to preach the word of God. And for word of God divides the home, it'll just to have to be divided. God's not going to compromise his word. He said so in the book. And so some wants a good a mixer. And then, of course, um, uh, the liberals, infidels, the modernists, they deny the fundamentals of faith. And, of course, there's some that know nothing about the faith, of course. And then there's a counterfeit salvation. There's so many people that have been duped by the spirit of the Antichrist in the matter of salvation. They don't know what salvation is. That's a counterfeit salvation. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and verse 4, If he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, if you receive another spirit, which you have not received another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Paul is talking about another Jesus. You may say, Preacher Edwards, what kind of Jesus is another Jesus? Well, another Jesus here is a Jesus without the cross, a one that's still on the cross. 
I know a religious leader today moping around and has a cane and on the top of that cane, he's got Jesus hanging on the cross. That's the only Jesus he knows a thing about, that one on the cross. He doesn't know anything about the one in heaven. Now your Jesus is on the cross. I said Jesus without the cross. Now my Jesus is one that died on the cross, was buried and rose again, and ascended back to heaven. That's another Jesus. And Paul said they're going to come preaching another Jesus. A Jesus of the liberals. A Jesus of the modernists. They're coming preaching another Jesus. And then he said there's another spirit. You better be aware of that. You may say, preacher, what is he talking about? One thing he's talking about is the spirit of the brotherhood of God, man and the fatherhood of God. You have those in land today that say God's our father and we're all God's dear children. Not a word of that truth. The Bible said if you want to become a child of God, you must receive Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior. We have those today in the ecumenical movement. They said we do doctrine. We're not going to have doctrine. We want to give our experience and we're going to talk about love and we'll love one another. That's the ecumenical movement. That is another spirit. That is not the spirit of God. Beloved, the only way any person can become a child of God is by being born into God's family. 1 John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, to as many as receive him, them gave me power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. So there's another spirit, the fatherhood of God, brotherhood of all men, which is not of God. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. There's another gospel. All false religions today are based upon works, upon human efforts for salvation. That's why you have humanism taught in our schools today. Beloved, they're trying to do away with God and let man make himself a God. Let man promote himself into heaven. That can never be done. That's another gospel which is works, kingdom building, working. That's no way to get to heaven. All false religions today are based upon human efforts. True religion, true salvation is based upon the sovereignty of God, upon the grace of God, and salvation is of the Lord. Now you look at all these religions in the world today, and you'll find that every last one of them is based on good works and human efforts and good deeds and social activities. Every one of them. There's a vast difference between the grace of God and salvation, the, the God Almighty salvation by grace through faith, and then human works and human efforts that people try to do to get to heaven. Salvation is entirely of God in its origination. It's of God in its application. It's of God in its effectuation. It's of God in its consummation. And salvation is entirely of God. If God didn't save you, you'll go to hell. You better believe that you don't save yourself. Somebody said to me one time, said, Preach Edwards, I want you to pray for me. I'll hold out faithfully and be saved at last. I said, I'm not going to pray such a foolish prayer as that. You don't hold out the end to be saved at last. You either saved now or you're lost now. And after you get saved, then you can do some praying for yourself. Beloved, you don't hold out to get to heaven. You don't pedal your way in like a man riding a bike. You don't work your way in. You're not good enough to get in. If God Almighty don't save you, you'll die and go to hell according to this book. Salvation is entirely of God. You have no part in your salvation. Now, after you're saved, it's God that works in you to will and do his good pleasure. You to work out your salvation after you're saved by the grace of God. Man plants a garden, it springs up, he goes worked out his garden. When God saves you, puts the water of life in you, you're born into God's family, then work out yourself and get out and, and do other things and help people to God and, and try to live right and try to do right because you don't save yourself. You can't anymore save yourself. You pick yourself up by your own bootstraps. And so that is a counterfeit gospel which is a social gospel in the land today and this little social gospel never saves anybody the only gospel that's going to save people is the dynamo of god the power of god under salvation the preaching of the word of god you can't be saved apart from the preaching of the word of god the hearing of the word of god faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god there's a counterfeit healing in the land today it'd take an hour and a half for me to get started on that and i'm not going to start on it but there's healing racket in the land of David, these so-called healers, that's not of God. God has nothing to do with that. They're racketeers. God can heal. God could raise the dead if he wanted to, but he's not doing it. God can heal and God has healed some people. And you don't have to get in a healing line and get a card and walk before some charlatan to have him to hit you in the top of the head to get you healed. Brother, that's fake. 
That's not of God. God's not in that stuff. That's racketeering. Those people um, um, in a racket, they're charlatans and make merchandise of sick people. And woe be unto them when they face God in the judgment. The spirit of the Antichrist is in the land today. And you better wake up and find out where you're going. Now listen to me. Now don't, uh, don't uh, drop your, 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 your teeth. Listen to me. This thing today that's called AIDS is a curse that's sent up on uh, homosexuality and queers and perverts and whatnot. Listen to me. Did you know there's no cure for that? Everybody's contract that disease is dying. Do you ever think about that thing? It's spreading. It's in academic form today. Did you know that? And that's spreading over this nation. Did you ever think about that thing might take over this nation and could pretty well wipe out most people in America? Have you ever thought about that? Amen. There's no cure for it. You better be praying. You better be talking to God. That's a curse God set up on evil in this land. And whether God will allow a cure for it or not, I don't know. But it's something to be concerned about it. I mean, it's being scattered. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's moving and touching many people. And many people are getting it through a, a blood transfusion. Read a paper today where it can even come to the tears out of people's eyes that have AIDS. That's something you better be thinking about. Do you ever think about God might be wanting to deal with America and God might send that curse upon this whole nation? There's no doubt of it. It's a curse upon uh, a sex perversion, no doubt about that. That's why it started, and that's why it's so prevalent. And it's God's curse upon it. And it may spread out to other evils in this land and all over this country. Wouldn't that be terrible? Wouldn't it? America, say 50% of America die with that kind of disease. There's no cure for it. What are you going to do about it? If you get it, there's no cure for it. And so it's the time God's people are doing some thinking, waking up, praying a little bit about something. That's a terrible, that's a danger. Say people are getting scared. Dentists today won't, won't fix the teeth of people who have AIDS anymore out in California. And I tell you, it's getting dangerous and it's serious. And people sit around sleep, never pray about it, never think about it. And they may never get a cure for it. I heard uh, the Governor Maddox say the other day when he's trying to get a cure for cancer, somebody said, the Governor, do you think maybe they might find a cure for AIDS? He said, no. He said, they've been trying to find a cure for cancer for 100 years and haven't found it. He said, no, they're not going to find a cure for it. You might know what he's talking about. I appreciate you listening today. The message may have been a little rough, but it'll help you. Stand to your feet. Father, I pray today that you'll take the message and use it to your glory. Father, I pray that as we move toward the end of this age, the spirit of Antichrist is so prevalent in the land that you wake up your people, wake up the men of God that's been called of God, that they might expose evil and preach the gospel. Father, help us today. Speak to this audience. And I pray especially for the radio listen audience. God, I pray that you might get a hold of somebody out there and save them today. For Christ's sake, amen. Now, Debbie's going to play for us on the organ as she plays. If you're in this building and you want to be saved, you want to come back to God, and you want to join this church the way we receive members, if you'll come forward, we'd be glad to consider you as you come forward and help you in any way we can while she plays a couple of stanzas. How about it? Giving the message God laid on my heart, I was going to try to preach on another message. But God laid this message on my heart. It's going to change and told the people, where's tonight? I might pre try to preach on another message. You no, know, God said, no, no, that's it. I want you to preach it. Now I deliver the message. Now it's up to the hearer. Do what God tells you to do. 